From the ESPN studios in Los Angeles, here's Gary Miller. Hello and welcome to Up Close. It is my honor and privilege. I got to say, guys, it's one of the uh, great highlights of my broadcasting career is to have. Now, I know the fight is scheduled for January 23rd of. Oh. Oh, you got it. Who's going to win this fight? You know what? Uh, we, it's it's going to be a victory for me just to be in the ring. Because <laughs> the doctors generally used to test me, trying to see the rate. And then they test me just to see if there's any kind of beat or anything in there now. <laughs> so I'm happy to be alive and pursuing excellence. Do you believe that's any a victory. of this? Yeah, I believe you're happy to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's going to happen? You know, it's going to be a good fight. Larry can tell you what he's going to do. But I, you know what? Since the first time I put on a pair of gloves, the bell would ring and I'd charge out there. And I wouldn't, I'm too old to change now. That's what's going to happen. And of course, Larry, he does what he, he, he's going to do what he, he's been doing forever. I, I don't know what that is because I don't know his style. I just know my style. Larry, the old style. I see. I used to run, but I'm gotten too old to run, so I got to fight him, you know? And, you know, hey, that's. That's what the people go and pay when for. you became champion this guy suddenly goes into the ministry yeah it was he he's been talking to you all these years no well 19 i think 1977 Seven, yeah. he, he he retired he came out of retirement i mean he went into retirement and i was on the threshold of becoming the heavyweight champion of the world in 1978 and he i think he was in retirement 10 or 11 years or whatever you know he didn't even think about it and then when he came out of retirement I was going into retirement, and, you know, I think our passes really never came. And then when people say for this guy, Roger Levitt, he's the only one that really put his money where his mouth is. Now, you have said in your book, Against All Odds, mm -hmm. which is a very entertaining book, oh, yeah. th this guy pulls no punches in writing, and I know he doesn't in the ring either, oh, no. but, Larry, you said that you, in your prime, would have beaten him. You hope to beat him now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had said that you would take him, and let me quote you here, that you would beat his behind. Uh, I'll put it nicely. Mm -hmm. You still feel that way? I mean, you're yeah. sitting right next to him. Why don't you kick I, his I, I behind? Like My mama told me, never demonstrate your talent for free. You gotta get paid. <laughs> no, uh, you know, I feel the style makes fights, and this is what's gonna make it, but he'll be a better fight now because the style will have changed because I'm too old to move and circle side to side like I used to my legs and whatnot. So I got to stay there and take a few, and I'm ready for that, and I prepare for that. Okay, let's settle another fight then. <clears throat> we are very honored to have you guys together, but we understand you were both supposed to be together on The Tonight Show. Now, why wasn't Larry with you on The Tonight Show? Oh, you sure are trying to start some stuff. <laughs> well, come on here. Oh, take that pretty tie home with me. <laughs> I'll, I would the rather jacket too, tie. but it'll fit on one arm. <laughs> oh, <you're right. laughs> Uh, you know what? We're having a good time traveling around the country promoting the boxing match, but nothing is going to happen until we get in the ring. You're not going to see one punch thrown, one not even one little anger, inch of it, until that bell I rings. I guarantee And it. then once, they get, <laughs> once we get in that ring, you're going to see the Tigers come out. I can't, but until I can't then, there's not, no anger or anything. We're just trying to get out here and up let the whole world know that hey, they're going to see the best fight of all times on January 23rd. It's, it's, guaranteed. It, yeah, guaranteed. it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. You're not going to see a better fight. I'm 50, and he's younger than me, of course. He's got the, yeah. the you know the age advantage. No, I have he the age advantage. He just turned 49. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show birthday, the, by the way. But I'm going to show the whole world that we'll the age 50 <laughs> is not out. a death sentence. I can still perform. If there's anybody out there, people tell me all the time, well, you whip me. Let one of these youngsters come up and whip me. I've chased them all over the country. I've never been knocked off my feet since I've been back in the boxing. I mean, ask those guys, when are they going to quit? I'm here. And you know what? I'm going to stay here. I'm going to show them that I can do it as long as I want to. We're moving to the next millennium. The age 50 is going to be a blessing, see, not a curse. See, the whole thing is when I fight George, if George beat me, I want a rematch. <laughs> I want I want to give him a rematch. Okay. So I want the same thing back. Now we talked about you fought now. a lot in Mississippi when there's the casinos down there. We talked about gambling before the show began. And I know George is a minister, preacher. Yeah, I don't gamble. You don't gamble, but could you make a friendly wager? Could you oh. say if you you know I don't know what you'd put up bats from Eastern Pennsylvania and would, you know Houston I'd <laughs> you know, some I'm Cajun a, food. I'm but, having a ball. Just I'm, getting in that ring is, a, is an outstanding achievement. I, I, I got That's a restaurant up right back there. in Houston. I'm put, put up the up, restaurant? No, I put up a Larry Holmes Champ Burger. Okay, <laughs> Champ Burger <laughs> against <laughs> one of your. I, I've been wanting to get one of those. Things. <laughs> yeah. Now, how do you think your Champ Burger compared? Have you ever eaten one of the things off his machine? No, but I tell you what, it looked so darn good when we was up yeah? in New York. I wanted to grab one, but it, he had him in the kitchen. 
kids had them, I couldn't get one, so I just ate the ice cream. So if you beat this man on January 23rd, will you at least give him one of those hamburger makers? You know what? He can have one anyway. All and right. Whole, I'm not. I'm going to be here until the whole United States of America has at least one over <laughs> how, how much? How this much is an outstanding. Don't much? worry about it. You got him. Oh! <laughs> this <laughs> is an outstanding grill, I'm telling you. It slants and channel out the fat. It's slanted and it's easy now, to George, clean up. we get to that part yes, of the no. broadcast schedule at about 4 this morning. Oh, okay. That thing will definitely be on for a full half oh, hour. Okay, so okay. we'll give you plenty of time <laughs> for that. <laughs> now, I want to get back to this book, which you seem to be backing I away from. I, I'm telling you, no. I'm not a pitch man. No, I, know. I tell things straight. This is a very entertaining book. One of the things he said about you in this let's, book let's, is, yeah, what kind it. of a guy names all of his kids George? He can't remember their names? I'm preparing for memory loss. I'll tell you. <laughs> So what happens you know, when you call out George young, four kids we had, There were seven kids, right? My yeah. mom would get upset and say, you... <laughs> and she never... And I said, I'm never going to make that mistake. So it was like, George, George, Georgetta, Georgina, come on in here. <laughs> That's what I've done. Do to you make have nicknames? Sure. Oh, yeah, there are a lot of nicknames. Okay, but, like... Well, one, two, like George. Three, four, five. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> George one, George two. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. George Who's, three. Okay. Oh, so they're just such chronological nicknames. Yeah, you're laughing at me. <laughs> I, hey, I, I would never laugh. At you. He's laughing at you. We criticize you. No, because uh, you know, in, in a sense, I do know what he's talking about. Because when we was young and we were growing up, my mom would say, "Lie, leap, feet, float." You know, <laughs> she would do that. You know, so I take care that. of that. Now you've had, a, you did have a lot of uh, siblings. Yeah. A lot of them have been involved. Mm -hmm in your career, which I didn't know until I had read the book, mm -hmm. that a lot of them, and some of them have fallen on tough times, sure. and some of them are still with you. Mm -hmm. How has that been gratifying to you to have your family involved in your career? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's great for me to have any of my friends and my family. That shows you that when you get the wrinkles out your stomach, you don't forget where you come from. And I have a guy, and I try to bring him along, you know, to give him something to do, but, you know, I'm not going to give him, give him, give him, and I don't have anything to give for, <laughs> uh, for my family. So, uh, you know, I, I did what I can, and if they don't like taking what I got to offer, then that's up to them. All right, I'm going to try and instigate you guys one more time. Why? Here's another way. Well, you're <laughs> boxers. Come on. We're trying to pr promote some animosity here. Once again, this guy's making more money than you are for this fight. Hey, I'm older than you. <laughs> the older you are, the more but, money you need. But again, I'm going to say this. That's been the story of my life. Roger Dangerfield, no respect. Mike Tyson got more money than me. Brenda Holyfield got more money than me. Alan McCall got more money than me. Leon Michael Spence got more money than me. Muhammad Ali got more money than me. Kenny Norton got everybody. Jerry Cooney got more money than me. Now Joyce Foreman getting more money, me, money than me. Now what is this? Who am I, some poop? <laughs> Or something, I can fight just as good as anybody. I was champion of the world for seven and a half years, reigned longer than anybody except for the brown bum himself, Joe Lewis. And why are you getting more money than me? I tell you, like, I got nine kids, and when I come home, they say, Stand or search, spread, <laughs> spread. And, uh, and then when they're not saying that, they're like, pockets ah, and stuff. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you can't send me home to my kids with any money. Without could, any now, money. here's one of my ideas to reform boxing. Could we have ever have a bout, and could you guys maybe initiate this, be the first to ever do it, where you have the two different sized purses, one of you, you're going to get 10 million, they're going to get 4 million, the winner gets the higher purse. You agree to that? Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. You'll yeah. do that. Right on. God, let's shake on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he went to the camera we don't have. Come on. <laughs> We're never going to see that, are we? <laughs> All right. We, we will get to something that we can get these guys to disagree on. I, I don't know what it's going to be. Against the odds. I'm still against the odds. I can't Yes, you are. On it, I, I absolutely agree with you. Well, we're just getting started here. We'll have more with George Foreman and Larry Holmes. We'll get their perspective on the greatest and how their separate bouts with Muhammad Ali have changed boxing history. That more, so stick around. Up Close is presented by the document company Zero. Keep the conversation going. Share the knowledge. Welcome back to Up Close in Los Angeles. Gary Miller has the honor of having Larry Holmes and George Foreman, who are fighting on January 23rd in Houston. Now, how did you get him to come fight in your backyard? Uh, tell him we, we almost started fighting ourselves a few minutes. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, so I'm still kind of hot. But I, I, I honored your request to not... Talk yeah, about what yeah. we're... All right, yeah, so I'm not going to start a fight here. Come on, let's arm wrestle. Fight. Let's see how strong you really yeah. are. Me? No, I want to see you two guys, unless you got $10 million for it. Well, this guy's got some good book. It's a lot of good read. It's a good read, and I admit that. Now, how'd you get him to agree to fight you in your backyard? Why didn't you fight in Easton? Look, Larry, I've never <laughs> fought 
in the Astrodome, Larry Holmes has. That's his stomp. Those, that is the stomping ground. I didn't want to go. I didn't want my book. But I want. I like I Texas. There. I love Texas. I mean, the best barbecue in the world. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and George is going to be the referee. <laughs> George is going to be a judge. <laughs> George is going to be the doctor. <laughs> Howard, Howard, uh, Howard ticket sale. <laughs> Everything is going great. It's going to be a good fight. The Astrodome is the only place big enough to hold all the folks who are going, who are going to come. Did you buy your ticket? <laughs> I thought you guys were going to give me a Oh, ride. yeah, that is oh, right. Good yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Now, in the earlier segment, we, we showed Muhammad Ali. You both had very different experiences with the guy, but he definitely had a m profound influence on both of your careers. Larry, in a good and bad way. You started as a sparring partner, and, and tell us about what that fight was like. I know it's a long time ago, but do you still get emotional about thinking about the time you had to fight him? No, no, I, I don't get emotional because that was what I was being paid to do. That's part of my job. Uh, I didn't want to hurt no one. I, I never want to hurt nobody, and I didn't want to get hurt. But uh, beating Ali was um, part of my job. And the guy that gave me the opportunity to work with him, I worked with him for four years as a sparring partner. And uh, it, it was a great thing for me to be around him all those years. Did, did each of you see, I assume you've seen when we were, were kings, uh, mm -hmm. the, the I, film I that came out, the documentary. I, I starred in the thing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what, what was your impression? Of, I was, what was the, dope, remember? Absolutely. What was your impression of the film, though? Oh, I liked it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Especially the part when I'm like... <laughs> 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 but you know what? I had a chance to recreate and re just get a in touch with the love I had originally for Muhammad Ali when he was Cassius Clay. He was the most beautiful man you've ever seen. He was so fun loving. So watch it experience with me. Now, how much did that fight change? You know, you retired not long after that and you come back almost like well, a different person. The, the movie When We Were Kings, but I tell my kids is when I was a fool. <laughs> <laughs> no more days like that. When we were nuts. But uh, I've had a big change, but it's mostly because I'm older, better. You start telling your kids, sit up straight, put a smile on your face, be nice to people. And you start selling that product and you start, you know, you start to use it. And that's what I'm doing. You know, you guys remind me of each other the way you fought in your comebacks. You, you fought some of the best. Like, guys don't want to fight you guys. How did you get the nerve up to fight each other? Because nobody else wants to and fight it, you it guys. Ta it takes nerves. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is going to be a tough fight. And for Larry, he intends to win. I know he's going to try to win. He's going to do everything he can to win. I but I don't, try. yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, he's going to do everything he can to win. But for me, I don't win unless I get a knockout. I go home and say, put, they give me, and the winner, George, for my, put, put, put. I don't want a, a, a decision. I want a knockout. And that's all I've ever strived for since 1966, to get knockouts. I've never I wanted anybody to put a belt nowhere. around my back and say he's the champion. He won on points. I, I don't want all that stuff. I want a knockout. I'm, I'm crazy. I ain't going nowhere. I'm just, Can I'm, he knock you out? I ain't going to get knocked out. The only one guy knocked me out, that was Mike Tyson. That was in 1988. After a two-year layoff, they got me to come back. After a two-year two layoff, and only gave me two months to get ready, and I went on out there and did it, you know. And so I had no, no excuses. But Mike Tyson got lucky that day. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm crazy, and I'm hungry. My kids got to eat just like George kids. <laughs> Let me get each of your impressions about Don King. Great guy, ain't he? He wears the hairs up like that, and the reason why he wears the hair up like that to hide the horns. What do you think, George? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but realistically, think about it. The best, probably the most magnificent fights you've ever seen, they were promoted by who? By Don King. So you can't take away from him. He has supplied the thirst of the whole athletic world. There's nothing been bigger than his boxing matches. You hear people now, you talk about uh, football and basketball, but forever people will be saying Jack Dempsey means strength, Muhammad Ali means class, Larry Holmes means. Uh, think think, think about, about it. Think about it. What does he mean? <laughs> what, is, what does Larry Holmes mean? No, but realistically, what does he mean, Larry? No, Holmes it means mean something. The greatest outstanding boxing. In no, no, boxing but it history. means something. Who gave us those meanings? Don King. Let me ask you about another he took guy. Took the money, but he gave us the, the meaning. We had. Roy Firestone, who made this show what it is, sure. doing Howard Cosell out, out in, the, in the lobby. Howard Cosell, the late, great yeah. Howard Cosell. Yeah. Now, you said something very interesting in your book, Against the Odds, about an encounter where Don King was sitting at the table at Caesars, and that Howard Cosell made a pass at you? 
Well, you know, you got to read the book because Don laughed about this, and I don't really know if Howard Cosell was that way. He did it not. twice, right? Uh, you, you know, somebody told me Howard had some sugar in his tank. <laughs> no, I don't know if he did. No, but he's that, a joker. Howard but, Cosell was a joker. He yeah, said it was I, a joke. He said a lot know. of things as a joke to make but, you shock you, but he was a fun-loving guy. But I was and scared. his wife, Emmy. What happened? He, he didn't say her. it, though. What I did was, he do to you? I was scared. No, he loved it. He wife. had his hand under the table. Uh, Are you going to take us through it? No, I ain't gonna take you. Okay. You gotta buy the book. Okay. Against Let me tell you, folks, but I can tell you, I've been story. knowing this guy for years. A great man, great husband, man, great guy. How, how much has he missed in terms of? How much did he add to the sport that we don't? And the sport's so you, much different yeah, back you then. You could watch it on free game, TV. You have a basketball game, but then when you had Howard Cosell there, they were more. They were an event. That's how well, how much he's missed. I think people pay more attention to Howard than they did the game. <laughs> <laughs> how relevant is this fight in terms of if you guys had both fought in your prime? I think. Can you still right say, time. hey, I would have beat him any time? This is the right time. Forget about the past. Right. You know, people, I don't even listen to old-time music. The oldies, I, I'm into the rap this, and all of that really? stuff. Yeah, really? Yeah, Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey and, and what's that guy with the, the, the pointed hair? Yeah, I forget it. You know, I, Coolio. Coolio. <laughs> you know, in other words, forget about yeah. that. That the best is See, yet to come. This is the right this time. Let me tell you why it's the right time. Because we'd have been sitting you know back Coolio saying, that was pretty hip. We'd have been sitting back saying, <laughs> What happened if Gerald Foreman and Larry Holmes fought? Now it's the right time to say. You see what, what Now, happened. will this stand for those whole 20 years when he no, didn't yeah, fight? No, no, say, no, this will no, show no, that I would have beat his butt oh, back then? This fight for the next millennium. I oh, mean, yeah. we'll, we'll, we're going to we're the standard barrel for what's going to happen. You tell in your the about it. You got grandkids yet? Not yet, no. He's still young. Yeah. I got to well, get the late better, start. You got to get my you autograph. It's like. I'm gonna, I may name him like George. So it's between George and Larry Jr., and Larry's my brother's name. So we'll see who wins this fight. My first son will be named after that. Are you going to invite us back after this? Absolutely. Okay. But only if you prove the topic. Oh, you're going to pay for the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> You'll pay for the limo. When we continue, we'll ask George Foreman and Larry Holmes if they think Mike Tyson can get his title back. And we'll take a look back on how pro fights were promoted in the past like this. Come on, come on, come on. Close is presented by the document company Xerox. Keep the conversation going. Share the knowledge. Keep me. Punch me right here in front of everybody. Larry, keep me. And punch me. And George, do you think you could make a car leap like that? Uh, I, the car would probably sink, <laughs> crash from the top, one step and pop. Well, are, you are you impressed, George. though? Hey. Huh? Are you impressed by that athletic endeavor? No, I, I didn't really see it. Okay. Holly, Holly <laughs> watching you. Hollywood can do anything today. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good start. So that's you? 91. That's you can't go back to that. But you can still fight. That's Hollywood, yeah. I, I still can run a little bit. Do now, now you appeared to help Mike Tyson get his license back in mm -hmm. Las Vegas. I want to get each of your no, thoughts. in Lane City. Uh, I mean, I'm in, sorry. In, uh, it, Jersey. Uh, in Jersey. Yeah. I want to get each of your thoughts on, on Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. Where does he rank in the annals of all time? Does he, obviously, you think he deserves to have his license back. Yeah, well, I think Mike Tyson is one of the greats. You know, I don't say the greatest. I don't put the greatest of anybody. I say one of the greats. Uh, I think. Uh, he should have got punished, but I don't know about the $3 million. That was kind of hard. And I don't know about the year and something. I think he should have got punished and slapped and did some community service and see some uh, doctors that tried to help him out with some therapy and put him back what he knew how to do. And if he gets in trouble then, then you really slap him. Do you think he can get the title back, George? I think so. I think we have not seen the best of Mike Tyson yet. <clears throat> if he ever gets himself into the gym, Get him a good trainer. He can be heavyweight champ of the world. That's easy. Is, is there a letter that you guys are fighting? No, this will be one of those fights that uh, <laughs> come and see it. It's going to be 12 rounds, of course. Are you going to go both go the distance? We're do gonna, you think so? It's going to be a 12-round uh, schedule match. Like I told you, I do not want to go 12 rounds. I don't even want to go five rounds. We're going to have a I fish never fish. look out. I never get into the boxing matches and hope to win by decisions. I look for a knockout. It's my nature. <laughs> So we don't have a prediction. I've been doing this since I was a 17-year-old well, boy. I've George never wanted to box. I'm looking for a knockout. 
I'm looking for a knockout, but I'm looking for a knockout late. I'm, okay. I'm hoping that I can wear him See, down. Larry went into the gym and he was boxing and yeah. we'll dancing and everything. We'll find out if they can get out of here without starting this thing. And I was the guy that January 23rd in Houston. From. It's a fight that we all anticipate. We thank very much Larry Holmes and George Foreman and look forward with bated breath to their bout a month from now. With, Thanks. What's that? Bated breath. Oh, my goodness. That's beyond <laughs> my comprehension. <laughs> Thursday on Up Close, Lindsey Davenport is our guest. Friday, new NM Angel for his baseman, Mo Hit Dog Vaughn, joins us. I'm Gary Miller in Los Angeles. Thanks for watching Up Close. Stay tuned for SportsCenter.